Korth for the Game Boy by Ultra Care of Konami, released in 1990. Essentially, it's a hybrid of Pajitnov's ever-so-popular Tetris franchise and Taito Space Invaders. It's like one would think both classics had a baby or some shit like that. First released in the arcades in 89 in both Japan and Europe, the latter of where it was alternatively titled Block Hole, it was then ported to various consoles, the Famicom, the NEC PC-9801, the Sony MSX, Sharp X68000, and others. But the focus of this diatribe revolves around the Game Boy Edition, the only port in the bunch ever to see the light of day here in the US, distributed by Konami short-lived imprint Ultra, no less. At the start, you can actually pick one of six ships, while others allow up to four, but that's beside the point. The first three and last three of which have different sets of themes depending on the ship that you select, complete with one of three difficulty levels and ten different puzzle stages, one of which is set at random, excluding the primary nine. Gameplay-wise, much unlike Tetris, if somehow the opposite, it revolved around wiping out certain regions of falling blocks by firing within their missing, incomplete areas, thus making complete squares and or rectangles, the two most common parallelograms no less, out of them. The more blocks you wipe out, the more points you score. Hell, you can even wipe out a group of incomplete blocks by forming them into a more elaborate shape. In order to bring down more groups of blocks, simply use up on your D-pad, as if your desired ship's traveling further. However, I'd keep a close surveillance on any incoming block if I were you, because if it or they happen to hit your ship's barrier field, hence this game's title, it's an instant game over, no continues, no mercy. Flipping back, if you manage to wipe out every last block, you've cleared a level, thus you have to go through the same exact goddamn routine. Unlike the other ports mentioned, and maybe the original arcade, the Game Boy version here provides you with differentiating power-ups depending on how much you've scored. One increases your ship's firing speed, another clears out an incoming region of incomplete blocks, whilst one doubles your overall point value, another halts the flow of the descending blocks for a brief period of time, amongst others. In Valorous Defiance of how repetitive the gameplay aspect can become over time, not to mention how fluid and responsive the controls are, it's actually a thrill-a-minute puzzle odyssey like no other. In full honesty, it's no Arkanoid, Columns, Puyo Puyo, Junction, what have you. But I'll definitely take this over something like, say, The Infamous Deadly Towers by Broderbund and Irem, any fucking day for sure. Concerning Quartz Challenge, like most puzzle games, including some of the titles I mentioned, most notably Taito's Arkanoid, the first three to four stages aren't too hard to get used to, but as you advance later on, Sakura fucking blue and Fizi solo pay. It'll rip the living bejesus out of your reflexes and planning tactics. Bottom line, I wouldn't so much as fuck around too much here, you really have to watch how many blocks are required for each incomplete shape, not to mention the speed at which they descend, and even their individual series of demises, and keep in mind the preceding instant game over one hit kill. In terms of graphics, they're rather adaptable even for an early Game Boy game, albeit plain. Take note, I'm in no way, shape, or form sliding the visuals of this hidden gem, but I wish Konami would have applied a bit more effort, a smidgen or two at least, in terms of the in game background elements. Well, considering this handheld's limitations, and that they've also released the Japan only Famicom port. But then again, what's the point of bitching about it at all? This game's myriad of musical tracks, composed by Hidehiro Funouchi of Operation Sea fame, based on the Ryo Hanzawa's original arcade soundtrack, are magnificent beyond imagination, and are somewhat reminiscent of Yellow Magic Orchestra's repertory in terms of the melody and beat construction. Speaking of which...
Anyways, with that out of our system, the sound effects are definitely sort of mediocre, though they tend to grate and drone on you after quite some time. And yes, I have a personal favorite from this game alone, theme one for ships A, B, and C. And lastly, concerning Quartz's replayability, while I'll admit it is a rather pleasing joyride, the same patterns of blocks will always apply in between each playthrough, regardless of which ship and or difficulty mode you've picked beforehand. And when it comes to the later one-player stages, there's a thin-ass line between speed and strategy, which is why I suggest referring back to my challenge statement. And don't even get me started, at all, with the two-player modes. It's those I suggest playing for myself to fully understand its purpose if I were you, and for which, in true Tetris and Pokemon fashion, you definitely need another Game Boy, cartridge copy, and of course, a link cable. As ever, in summation, what's my final verdict on Korth? Despite whatever pitfalls this game harbors, which I intend to avoid repeating, and despite falling somewhere within the middle ground of other Game Boy obscurities, I believe it's still an invigorating puzzle shmup hybrid of a pandemonium booster, even after god knows how many years. Yet again, it's no columns, Dr. Mario, or, yep, you get the drift. But in all seriousness, who can resist an addictive as Blue Oyster Puzzler? By all means, hunt it down like the Rogue Tomato in Final Fantasy XII. I assure everyone that there won't be so much as a single solitary pine of lament or regret doing so. Trust me. Until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God officially and proudly signing off.